a, a final point on this because I just I just think I, I, it's just something that I read a lot and bump into a lot with a lot of people. Um, Marx's analysis of capitalism and the and it seems pretty close to what the Chicago School of Economics is also kind of it, it kind of makes economics the driver of everything. It seems this also from what you're talking about and what you've talked about that looks to be a mistake as well that this idea that we can just find the mechanisms of economics and then explain everything just doesn't seem to be the case if 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 what you're what the anthropologist looks at it it, it makes no sense really just to say look at the economics forget about everything else and you'll get to the heart of the matter when when Marx was writing in the middle of the 19th century, you can see why he took this view because capitalism was very, that is the ownership of labor, um, land and machinery was very concentrated into certain hands, both in Britain and in America and increasingly in Germany. So it looked as if what was driving Britain and America and increasingly and soon Japan and so on was economic forces, the forces of the market and uh, industry and so on. And therefore, if you were looking for a prime driver, because what Marx needed was a mechanism in the dialectic, that the change from one type of civilization to the next needs something ultimately that pushes it on. Mm. What was that first thing that moved you from feudalism to capitalism and so on? And as he looked around him at what was happening in the middle towns of, of Britain, the obvious thing was the economy. And so it was very easy to focus on that and to say that above all, we must deal with this problem of alienation and the economic base. So his infrastructure, which is the economy, the, the mode, uh, the um, the technology and so on, and the relations, the class system, that is the, the base of a building. And the less rest is superstructure. So that in inverting Hegel, he said that ideas are an epiphenomena mm. of the real. The real is economic relations. And then we idealize them and turn them into beliefs about it. If we can change the base, then we can change the superstructure, and therefore let's start with property and so on. You can see why he thought it, believed it, um, but we can see it's rubbish. And the person who saw it was rubbish was Adam Smith. I mean, Adam Smith was the founder of, or the the person who laid out the kind of blueprint of modern capitalism. And as I say, his second book was on law and politics. And he, above all, showed that um, economic transactions are socially embedded uh, in social relations and have to be founded on political systems and on systems of law. The whole thing would crash to the ground. So if you make economics dominant and take away the other parts of life, the social relations, the legal, the political, and I think he would say, as a Scotsman, the, the religious, um, it won't work. These things are interlinked. And most of history has not been driven by economics, it's been driven by religion and politics. And therefore to make it supreme and dominant. And he would also have said to the Chicago school or some exponents of it, this is complete exaggerated nonsense. The idea that you can, again, rather like Rousseau, you can set people free, you know, just get on with it. And the laws of the equilibrium and the market, Ricardian and other laws will make it fair in the long run. You'll have trickle down or you'll have everyone getting what they should get. And we've all, we're all on a level playing field and let, let it rip. Well, we see what, that, what happens with that. If you let it rip, the poor get driven to the wall, um, people cheat, et cetera, et cetera. So to bring in that kind of 
free market mentality with nothing else to give it uh, a context is a disaster. And we saw it, if you wanted a case of it, it's the Soviet Union. It was like Russia was the... 1990. I mean, yep. if you look at the horror of Russia now and the horror of Russia for the last 30 years, who caused this horror? Well, the Russians obviously have a part to play in, and so on, but it's also America. It's, it's free market people who said, let it rip, take away everything. And what do you end up with? You end up with um, vast amounts of Russian wealth being taken off by the oligarchs and you a corrupt system and so on and so on. So the Russians replaced one disastrous philosophy, which was the left-wing philosophy of Marxism with a, another disastrous philosophy, which is right-wing philosophy of the Chicago school, etc. And it's just as bad, you know, it, it, British way is the mean in the middle between the balance between these things.